Now that first challenge, I didn't know anything about affiliate programs. Like Ally Bank, you owe me some coin. I for the first had, year. For the first year. Yes. <laughs> Ally Bank, because I remember Ally was like, it was like a new bank and their savings account was paying out more than any other online only savings account. And so I was sending people to Ally Bank and I used to do a, um, a weekly survey to see if people took action. And at the time, about three or 4,000 people signed up for a bank account. Can you imagine? And I didn't know, but then Ally had this affiliate program where they're paying you $25 per person that signed up. When I found out, I like wept because I was broke. So imagine twenty five dollars times four thousand people, and I was like, "Wait, is it retroactive?" <laughs> 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 but that's when I started to learn about monetization, you know, because someone was like, "Oh, are you doing affiliates?" I'm like, "What's an affiliate?" They're like, "Wait, so those ten thousand people that came through your challenge, how are you getting paid?" I'm like, "Paid." They're like, "Tiffany, <laughs> you can get paid." And so I learned about affiliates. I also too. I even fought against this. I wrote my first, well, my first book, The One Week Budget, was not doing that great. It was doing okay, but not that great. So I wasn't really interested in doing another book, but someone who was going to take the challenge said, I really would like it in book form. And I, I'm always fighting against the money. And so I'm like, well, duh, Tiffany. And she said, can you put it in a book? I said, well, why would you want me to put it in a book? Because then it's going to cost you money. Hello, it's free online. And she's like, well, Tiffany, one, some people want to support you. And two, I'm someone who likes a book. And I was like, you're lost. So I put it in the book and um, literally just the, the blog post, you know, formatted it differently. I paid like a kid $200 to format it, uploaded it to Amazon. That, um, and there, I remember their um, self-publishing platform was called Create Space back then. And uh, I remember it took two years for my book, The One Week Budget, to hit like the, the Amazon bestsellers like list for, for budgeting. It took two days for the Literature wow. Challenge book to do so. And I remember being like, wait, you guys want books? And so, yeah, it just was selling like crazy. And that's how I made my money back because that first January, I made $10,000 from people buying the book on Amazon. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I started to do the challenge and I still do them every year, every January, we come up with a new one. We have five of them and they're all free. Still, you go to liveritcherchallenge.com. They're all free in there. There's the fundamentals, credit edition, savings edition, net worth, and home buying edition. And then one coming up now, I have something called financial wholeness. So it'll be the financial wholeness edition. But it was a game changer. It was a game changer because what I didn't recognize then, what I understand now is that the literature challenge wasn't just like, okay, people are being helped. Yes. But because I have like a certain way of like talking, you know, and a certain way of being, I was indoctrinating dream catchers because you enter into the challenge. you like, everybody knows I start with, Hey, Hey, Hey. And like, there's a certain way that I teach. So you were going through like Tiffany boot camp, like to be like, I love Tiffany. By the time you came out of Tiffany boot camp, it was like, oh, I love the budget. I love Tiffany. And but I didn't recognize that. Yes. And so it was honestly, aside from, you know, losing that money to Jake and it, it causing me to educate differently from a place of empathy, this was hands down the, I mean, it, it created the business. I would not be here. I would not, where do you gather? Where do you get 900,000 people? I mean, there are times, even when a new challenge comes out, we always get this huge bump. It might be another two, 300,000 people will sign up. Uh, just to join the new free challenge. And it it allowed me to, one, I got to really understand who was my demographic because we would do surveys and I would understand like, so when brands and things come to me now, I'm able to say, nope, 40% of my ladies really want to save. Nope. 30% of them really want to, you know, pay down debt. I know who they are, what they need. And it allowed me to create my, 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 my most profitable business, um, the Live Richer Academy, because I believe basic financial education should be free. I helped to get a law passed in the state of New Jersey, making it so for middle school students because New Jersey already had a law for high school. So a friend of mine who's an assembly woman, when she won, she came to me, was like, I want to do something for financial education. And I was like, well, Jersey has a law. We're like a forerunner in that for, for high school. But honestly, as a former preschool teacher, kids as low as kindergarten really should be learning pre-financial education, age-appropriate financial education. And she said, okay, let's work on a law together. So we did. And we got it passed for middle school. So we're still working on the elementary school component. And so for me, I just, I think that financial education, basic financial education, how to budget, how to save, how to pay off debt should be free. That's why the challenges will continue and will always be free. But people had taken the challenges and were like, Tiffany, you taught me how to budget. You taught me how to save. You taught me how to fix my basic credit and pay off debt, but I need more. And I was like, well, even though I was doing things for myself, 
it wasn't enough that I felt like an expert to teach it, you know? Like, I invest for myself, but not enough to teach you how to invest. And so I thought, well, well, what do you want to do? At first, it was going to be an investment club. And they're like, well, yeah, let's do an investment club, but I want to learn how to start a business. I'm like, well, that's not an investment club. And I also want to learn about insurance, and I want to learn about estate planning, and I want to learn about retirement. And I thought, well, who teaches me those things? So I started to pull my financial friends who helped me to do those things. And I said, could you teach a class? And they did. And I, I combined these classes and I created um, what's called the Literature Academy. And right now we've got like 40,000 students in the Literature Academy. Wow. And seven figure, we just hit our first seven figure month in April and our reoccurring. So we are at eight figure year business because our reoccurring is like, I don't know, uh, $850,000 a, a month. Yeah, so that's, that's amazing. Like, that's eight you know? figures. Yes. And so like, congrats. <laughs> but that's that incredible. Wow. Preschool teacher 10 years ago to now. Isn't that just so crazy? That's amazing. <laughs> that, Tiffany, that is amazing. And, and, you know, I wanted to ask you about, about the teaching you, so you light up normally, but you light up even more when you talk about teaching, right? Yeah. Like that at your core is who you are. That that's what I'm gleaning from you. What makes a good teacher and what makes you a good teacher? So what makes a good teacher, a, a good teacher is a good student, one. So you have to be open to, like, I'm constantly learning, constantly listening, constantly reading. But really what makes a good teacher is somebody who actually cares. Because your student, whether it's a three-year-old, a 33-year-old, a 103-year-old, can feel if you actually care about them. And so what I think people ask me sometimes the secret sauce of like the budget needs to why has it done well? And it's because my dream catchers can tell that I really care. Like I think about them. I care about them. I try to create solutions. Like I really care, you know, that more than the money, more than all those other things, like I care. That's why I did the literature challenge because I could have made money with that. I could have just said it's a dollar and made $10,000. But I was like, no, it's much more important to me that you get the help that you need. I'm, I'm truly concerned about, are you okay? Like when I taught preschool and I learned that teaching preschool because three and four year olds, you know, they're, I mean, it's not about discipline really when you're teaching preschool, like you have to really almost love this child, like your child, because three year olds, they don't know. They're like, my mom's not here. So you're my mom, you know? And so literally I loved those kids. It was like, is, is Cora okay? Is, is Jonathan fine? Do they need something? And so you really learn to teach from a place of true caring about your, your students. And so that carried over into when I started to, to care for and, and serve adults. And I think a lot of people, because of preschool teaching me that type of teaching, I took that with me where maybe somebody who has never had the opportunity to teach younger grades, where that's basically a requirement, you know, then like I just see a lot of financial educators out here now who it's about the doom and the gloom and the shame. And it works for some people. Some people like to be shamed into doing better, but I just don't know that that's helpful. I believe in taking responsibility, but I don't know if I believe in making you feel bad. To what end? You know what I mean? My aim for you is to be better, not to feel worse. It's like, yep, we're going to take responsibility. Yep, you shouldn't have done that, but we're here now. Here's a paper towel. And so I think, yeah, that's what makes a good teacher. It's that empathy. It's that true caring because you can, like you said, I light up. You can feel that. And so people come, because I'm not teaching anything. Like you can literally Google budgeting. Why do people come to me? It's not because I'm teaching something like, oh, I, I, might, I might teach it like in a more fun way, but that's not why people come. People come to me because they're like, I know here at the Budget Nista, I'm going to be looked after. I'm going to be cared about. And I know that Tiffany is not going to do or bring anything to me that she does not really think is what's best. I mean, people call me all the time to, for me to sell things to Dreamcatchers. I could be making more millions a, um, a year more if millions. I say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I say no to almost everything because I'm just like, that's terrible. No, no, no. I'm not selling that or I'm not sharing that because I don't think it's it's good for people. I have something called the Lisa rule. Lisa's the baby who, who named me the budget Lisa because Lisa's a dream catcher. Um, and I remember one day I, I was sharing an app that I thought was awesome and in an email that I was sending out and she called me because she always pretends like the budget Lisa is different from the from Tiffany. And she's always like, oh my God, did you see budget Lisa's email? Totally excited about this new app. I'm like, my email? She's like, whatever. Budget Lisa <laughs> But Janisa said, this app is awesome. And I actually started to get nervous. I was like, wait, what app? And she's like, the app that Bud Janisa just sent out. And I'm looking and reading. And I thought, why am I nervous? Isn't this a good thing, Tiffany? Because my rule before used to be like, if I use it, I'll share it with you. But I realized that that wasn't a good enough rule. Because 
I'm more protective over Lisa's financial journey than I am for myself because I'm willing to try a bunch of different things. And I realized I need to turn up the integrity when it comes to sharing. So now I have my Lisa rule and I ask myself, if Lisa were to call me to say that she signed up for download or whatever, whatever it is that I'm sharing, how would I feel? If I don't feel 100% and I'm like, oh, great, Lisa, this is awesome for you, that I don't share it with dream catchers. <laughs>